my EPS files opened that I downloaded from Flat Icon, and I'm going to build a, a main file. I will just do file new. Um, it doesn't matter, but the only thing that does matter is that the color mode not be CMYK. Um, CMYK doesn't anything to do with web, web work, you should not use CMYK. Um, it doesn't render correctly. And um, so everything comes out with these crazy colors. All right. I'm RGB, I'm ready, create. Okay, so now basically this necklace is gonna have a ton of different components. Um, and I'm just going to list, um, so, so the idea is we're gonna have these artboards that are a little smaller. Um, so they're approximately square, so I'm using the artboard tool. Um, and then let me let me write a little list of the techniques that I want to show in this video um, so I don't get sidetracked. So basically we will use the Pathfinder uh, to make rings. We'll uh, add icons to basic shapes. will uh, control everything so it is the same size. And then we will 3D print um, a necklace in brass or gold. Okay. No, gold's too expensive. Or silver. Okay, cool. So, all right. So everything that we do is going to um, not have stroke. And a good way to work is just thinking of it all being black, right? Um, now we're gonna have several of these um, artboards. So get a little square artboard. You don't have to think too closely about what size it is because um, we'll adjust that stuff later. Um, but I need to hold option and I need to make sure that I'm always using the same one. Okay, and then it helps, I think, to put them in an order so that I know where they are. Okay, I'm zooming out and you can see this is another way that um, Photo Illustrator is really different in having this big desktop with all the artboards on it. So all I'm doing is using the artboard tool, I'm holding option before I even start, I'm making a necklace with like five links in it. Right, so I have five. Um, so I have kind of five units for this thing. All right. Now I have my desktop all arranged. Um, back to the artboard tool, and I'll make another area where I can see the links together. Okay. Now you can, if you Slack me or email me and give the argument that your identity or your personality doesn't have five parts that is fine um, so you can reduce this necklace to three parts and it's still cool um, all right so basically we're just doing um, we're just doing flat design here and we're coming up with uh, sort of a meaningful shape um, for you for the pieces of the necklace now it could be a circle it could be a um, it could be a polygon um, it could be squares linked together, um, whatever you feel like w would work. Um, and, and then if you, if you can't decide, then just watch this whole video and I'll, and I'll show you how, how I set it up. Um, all right. So I'm going to go with a triangle cause I think they look cool. Um, and then basically my concept is that I have the same triangle I'm gonna hold shift because I want perfect triangles. I like geometric jewelry, I think it's weird. 
it's like it's nice when it's like really just solidly geometric um, all right so I'm basically going to make three um, and, and let's just say if you're thinking grade wise that maybe three is the standard um, for this project but I wanted you to have the option to make links of four or five or whatever you want now the other thing to remember is so here's here's this idea right like I'm gonna be wearing this or I'm gonna give this to someone and then the center is gonna have this pattern of three triangles right um, now you could you could add something else to that you know you could have a um, you could maybe have a uh, hexagon or something in the center if you wanted to um, but just for purposes of demonstration um, you like just follow my follow my lead and then you can go back and change it however you want um, but but see how this would also look cool like if I you know think about my design here do 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 you could also make that work um, but it might be tilted or something anyways you can you can arrange the basic structure um, as much as you want okay um, but the the key thing is to design it symmetrically um, that's why you know jewelry is a good thing to work with um, and uh, yeah that's looking good You know what, I really want to, I think I want to just get rid of my other artboards for now. Because um, I want to I want to build them around the objects themselves. But when you do copy your artboards, make sure they're all the same size. Okay. Um, all right. Now, basically, in this interface that we're using, it will render, it will render grayscale, the grayscale will become equivalent to thickness. Right, so first of all, let's establish a medium grayscale because we want we want um, these to be kind of backplates to display the icons. So in order to do that, I can just um, well, actually, these are really good. These default ones. Um, see, these are just CMYK. They're in your library if you don't have them. Oh, I don't want CMYK though. Okay, um, so I'll just open up my black, and then instead of having this all the way black. Um, I want it kind of in the middle. So that means that it won't be the thickest thing when it prints out. Cool. That's basically all there is to it. Now the next thing we need to do in this process is we need to make um, a couple of links so that these can connect to each other. And they don't directly connect to each other, but they'll connect to each other with jump rings. Um, so let me show you that process. So I'm making a circle. I hold shift, right? And then I make another circle, you know, close to inside of it. Make a smaller circle. Just for visibility, I'll make that black. Then I'll line those up. All right. So that proportion is a little wrong. It needs to be a little thicker. So... I'm holding shift and transforming it. That's probably about right. Now, um, kind of the opposite, but the cousin of the Pathfinder palette is the Align palette. So I want these two circles to be horizontally aligned, and I want them to be vertically aligned. And if you don't have that in your sidebar, um, then it's obviously in your palettes align, right? Okay, now I have both of them, and I want to see how they scale in order to make uh, those little attachment rings. That's a, that looks pretty good, but I think it's a little bit too thin, just from having done this before. So I need to zoom up here. And I'm holding Option to scale from the center and Shift to make sure that it stays a ring. Something like that, that looks pretty good. And now we need to punch out the center. So I'm going to use um, the minus front command, which just gives me a ring. So see what I mean? You can, you can spend all day drawing this stuff, but just 
um, knowing the shortcuts and being able to design it um, really matters. Okay, so now you think about the weight, right? I, in my mind, you want this slightly upward and um, see, because it'll be heavy on the bottom. And so then I will go, um, I'm about to move it, but I'm, I add, as I'm moving it, I add option and then I add shift. And that'll let me make it totally straight. Cool. Now, the other thing I do then, is I hold shift and then I group these guys. Then I hold shift and have all of those selected, either the group and the triangle selected, and then I align them in the center, right? So that'll, that'll make it perfectly in the center. Cool. Um, zoom in and zoom out is just like in Photoshop, it's command plus and command minus. Um, but if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse like I do, um, you can try try whatever Zoom commands are on your computer. Um, I do Option and the mouse wheel. All right, so this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to then set aside these and make this a group, Command G. So now I have a group within a group. And then I'm going to copy this twice. Cool. So now these components are all kind of the same. And I'm going to flip one upside down. I'm holding shift while I rotate that. Um, get these guys out of the way. And now I'm kind of imagining how it will hang spatially, right? So... So see, the problem is if there's a chain on this side, if this is a necklace, and there's a chain on this side and a chain on this side, see how this piece is really top heavy? So this piece um, could flip over and poke the person in, in the neck. So I'm going to double click, go within this group, and then I'm going to move it down here, right? So that um, the, the weight is pulling it downward. Uh, now remember this is a group two and now these are space wrong so I double click inside of that group hold shift and transfer it all the way across cool so now I could you know theoretically let's get out of the group by double clicking the background so I mean theoretically I could be really extreme I could have the loops up here but I like the idea of kind of calibrating the weight you know, so it's just perfect. So you still see the edges of that triangle. Cool. Um, so now I have this, I hold shift and I grab that. And then once again, I use my align tool. Cool, so now I am pretty confident that, you know, depending, so this will hang pretty evenly, I think. The jump rings will be there and they'll connect those things, but this will hang down. So maybe it'll be more like this. And then the necklace itself, the chain will go here. And I feel like because there's so much mass at the bottom that this won't flip over. It'll look pretty much like that or like that. Cool. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add the icons and I have them all open. So, um, you don't need to change them at all. Copy. Go back to your main file. Oops, shoot. Oh, here it is. And then paste. And you want to keep this black because this will show... Um, this will be raised all the way to the surface. So the silver... The um, the geometric ones will be like um, a backing for this. Maybe that maybe we'll we'll see this a little more in 3D. All right, so just forget that for now. So now I'm doing a sprout.
looks really nice. Oh, and by the way, these can hang off the edges um, because because remember they they have metal as well. So I think that that looks really cool with the little leaf peeking off the edge. Maybe the guitar hangs off the edge too. But do think about the weight, right? Because black where we're adding black, so see all that mass, that'll be solid metal and that'll make it heavier. So we wouldn't want this guitar to be upside down because then the weight would be at the top and we might have that triangle flipping over um, sometimes. All right, so now mm, I'm gonna do this one representing art. And of course, you know, if you if you're a jewelry maker and you're excited about this, then you know, uh, in the next in one of the next projects, we'll learn how to add your drawings to Illustrator. So you could easily do this um, really differently with your drawings. Okay, now one thing this is all looking really good, but one thing that bothers me is tangents. Like, see those lines are uncomfortably close. They should either cross or not cross. So I'm going to decide that this whole unit should be a little bit smaller. Cool. All right. So now, um, now I'm going to go back to what I did at the beginning. I'm going to make the I'm going to make a bounding box. It doesn't matter how big it is. It just has to be big enough for the object and in the things that you bring into it have to all and you have to have three of the same size right so I'm gonna hold option cool now I need to um, group everything Me and G. And it's also important to know when you could when you could use the Pathfinder and when to group things. Like see, so see this um, the circles and the triangle. I could use the Pathfinder and make that one shape. That'd be fine. Um, but it doesn't really get me anywhere because maybe I need to move that circle. So um, you know that's not really the best for this project. Oh, was not grouped. Okay, cool. So I'm sort of roughly centering these. Um, and then we'll use the align tool to, uh, to make them really centered. Um, okay, so I go back to my group. And it's really important that they be group before you use the align tool. Um, because otherwise it'll align them all separately. So they're they're all grouped. And the other thing I'm going to do is see this button. It says align to selection. I change it to align to artboard. I do exact center uh, vertical, exact center horizontal. Same with this one. Center horizontal, center vertical. Center horizontal, center vertical. Cool. So now I have my three little objects. Um, now, the way that I output them in order to load them into um, the 3D printer is I use File Export. Um, and this is very critical too um, because white has meaning in the program. So you want to um, export for screens and I'm deselecting the first artboard I'm just using these, and these have to be PNGs. Now, because I want the highest quality um, image, I'll just go with four times. Um, all right, so PNGs have are unique um, because it's an image that can hold transparency. So what I'm wanting is for the white to be transparent and the objects to be alone. Um, I can give them a prefix here. I'll call it Nicholas. And I can find my path here. And so I'm going to make sure that I can find these later. 
Um, let's see, videos, is this my design videos? Yeah, okay, a new folder, call these necklace parts. Cool.